Hello everybody, this is Gregory with the Cinema Rank. I hope you're doing well today. Today I'm gonna to talk about how Hollywood, through its movies and television, ruined marriages and relationships. Now before I begin, if you appreciate my content, please post a comment, like the video, hit the notification bell, and subscribe. Now, my statement can be considered to be hyperbolic or exaggerating to effect, but hear me out. I'm not saying that Hollywood is the only thing that's destroyed marriage and relationships in the last 50 years, but it's a contributing factor. And if you look at the statistics, uh, divorce rates, of course, have skyrocketed since the beginning of no-fault divorce. No-fault divorce is the phenomenon where you can divorce anybody for any reason. You don't have to give a justification. So prior to 1970, you had to give a reason for uh, filing a divorce, and therefore divorce was much harder, especially women initiating divorce on men. With the advent of no-fault divorce, divorce just peaked for those big first 20 years, like the 70s and 80s. And in fact, divorce rates peaked in the early 80s and has, has kind of gone down a little since then, even though we see three generations of the effect of divorce on society. But the only reason that number is dropping is because less people are getting married. So cohabitation rate, rates are rising, but marriage rates are dropping. But it's still, I would say, a big problem. And now it's, it's the inverse where, as before, let's say in Don Draper's Mad Men, that kind of classic example where a man wanted to get a divorce uh, to get with a younger wife, he would initiate divorce. But as a compensation, uh, the woman, the first wife, would get alimony and the children and child support. So they'd be taken care of because back then women didn't really work and so they were taken care of. Now it's inverse. Women initiate divorce 70% of the time. And if the woman's college educated, it's actually 90% of the time. So it's a completely different phenomenon. But Either way, so Hollywood, I think, affects divorce in that I've mentioned before, and you can call me a Pollyanna conservative, I am a social conservative, that Hollywood's motto should be corrupting Americans since 1920. Because if, if you think about it, especially not the first maybe half of the century of cinema, but certainly when the codes were abolished in, in, the, in around 1970, and with the advent of the auteur directors like Scorsese, for example, and some of the other ones, you, you saw more of, of the violence, the drugs, the sex, the alcohol, a lot of things that were prohibited. And if you, if you step back, as entertaining as Hollywood movies can be, romantic comedies, comedies, actions, what are they really pushing? The normalization of drugs. Oh, we have to look, it's just Judd Apatow movies, Cheech and Chong, for example, premarital sex. And it's funny because most sex in, in, in movies is always fornication, as we used to call it, but premarital sex. It's rarely ever show sex in the marriage. But I would say it's been corrupting our values. But what do I mean by like that television and movies have destroyed marriage? In that look, in this, aside from what I just talked about, when we watch a television show or a movie, let's just talk about a romantic comedy. I know many of you men don't watch romantic comedies, but let's just look at a romantic comedy. It's almost like the whole issue with men in porn, in that a woman can't compete with the women that are represented in that, that industry. They really can't. And luckily, I've been spared the scourge of that problem. I've never had that problem. I have not watched it since probably my college years. And thank God, because a lot of men have issues with it. And I've been lucky. But it's the standard, right? So a wife has them try to keep up with this standard of looks. And you can kind of see that in Hollywood because if you watch a romantic comedy, what do you notice? The people are typically cast in these movies are gorgeous, right? Certainly the women have to be attractive. We've talked about like with Meg Ryan at her peak or some of the, the rom-com queens, you know, Sandra Bullock in the 90s. They have to be pretty enough to attract the man, but not too overtly beautiful to alienate the woman. This is why someone like Angelina Jolie was never in rom-coms because women didn't relate to her. So it's, she's gotta be pretty enough to get the guy, but not uh, pretty enough to alienate the woman. But overall, the women are beautiful. The men are typically handsome. And if they're at least not like Henry Cavill gorgeous, they're gonna be nice guys that have good jobs because women are able to forsake looks for other factors, namely uh, provisioning security. So look at Tom Hanks from Sleepless in Seattle, Billy Crystal from when Harry Met Sally. I know those are two Nora Ephron examples, but if you even look at someone like Dylan McDermott from My Best Friend's Wedding, these, I mean, he's, he's relatively attractive, but notice that the men don't always have to be as attractive. You can go back to the golden age of Hollywood and see this as well. But you have this. 
Then you have the whole, the, the whole trope of romantic comedies, how it's all about meeting each other and it's the chemistry. And then you throw in the, 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 the sex, the premarital sex. And then like Disney movies, it's the end of the movie is typically happily ever after. You could look at a television show, will they or won't they? You look at, let's say, Friends. Uh, you look at, I don't know, Northern Exposure, Gilmore Girls. I mean, there's a host, host of shows, The Office, where it's this boy meets girl plot. They get together, then they break up, then they get together, then they break up. And of course, this is all done to get you sucked into the characters because Hollywood really only cares about money. And of course, if it's movies, it's box office. If it's on television, it's ad revenue. So they want your eyes glued to the screen. And so you get invested in these characters and you see the decline of, of civic involvement in the last 40 years, like bowling clubs and Kiwanis and I don't know, the Grand Poobahs of the Flintstones and the Knights of Columbus. Like we used to be involved in all these civic organizations and you've seen that decline. And one of the reasons it's declined is because Phoebe, Ross, Rachel are our new friends. Like we don't need to actually know our neighbors and hang out with them because we just grow so attached to characters on television. But either way, so you see these relationships, will they, won't they, will they, won't they, and then it's always like a happily ever after. At the, the last scene of whatever show, you, you assume that the couple is gonna be happily ever after. Anyways, so you see this, you're, you're transported into this world of make-believe, and of course, on one level, we know it's make-believe, but on another level, we, 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 we juxtapose what's in this la-la land world and then we look to our left on the couch and he doesn't look like Henry Cavill. She doesn't look like peak Meg Ryan or whoever you like. I've been with her 10 years. I've been with him for 10 years. So it's not like the movies where it ends and it's happily ever after you see the beginning of the relationship, which is always the best part. It's 10 years in. Sex in movies and television. Normally it's premarital, right? So it's hot. It's not, I look at my spouse, I've been having sex with her for 15, 10 years, you know, vice versa. So it's, it's, it's so different. So in some ways, watching a lot of television movies, romantic ones, look at Outlander, right? She, he's saving her life, these historic period movies, whatever it is. That it, it's so far removed from the typical American's looks and adventures that it just naturally is gonna grow a disconnect and therefore in a disillusionment. Most people aren't gonna look like Meg Ryan of 1993. The average American, what, 75% of Americans are overweight, 40% are obese, so men and women are really overweight. So we're not gonna be able to look like Sam Hewen from Outlander who plays Jamie. You know, a lot of women like find him attractive. Most guys aren't gonna look like that. Most women aren't gonna look like Sydney Sweeney or whoever you find attractive. And so television projects these ideas into our head that ultimately undermine our marriage because we can't look like that and we can't act like that. And this is why you see a lot of romantic comedies and you see very few movies overall on divorce because people don't want to watch movies on divorce. You think of Kramer versus Kramer, the great Dustin Hoffman, Meryl Streep movie from what, 1980, 81? More recently, uh, you look at uh, Marriage Story by Noah Baumbach with Adam Driver and ScarJo, that's on Netflix. You know, there's very few divorce movies because people don't want to watch movies on divorce, but everyone wants to fall back in love. And so you see this slippery slope, kind of like with Harlequin novels, where you have disenchanted couples watching rom-coms, watching t television that have all this love interest, and even television shows that glamorize adultery and infidelity and emotional cheating. And so I would say as a whole, television for these reasons and other reasons and movies do a great disservice to marriage. They really do a great disservice to marriage and they very rarely push true family values. Even something like Disney, which is social engineering at its worst, rarely ever pushes true family values. And therefore we need to be very, very careful that if you are married, maybe have a conversation with your spouse and be like, look, I know, you know, this woman's beautiful or whatever. I don't expect you to look like way, that way. Even though in your mind you're like, I do wish you looked like that, but I don't expect this to be this way. And, and, and just have that conversation about television and movies and how it does undermine on various levels marriage, the sanctity of marriage and so forth. Guys, post in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.